Welcome to this start of a new series on how to create automatic train traffic on any EEP layout, which is done via Lua code. And not that you have to code uh, much yourself, the only thing that you need to do is to add a couple of tables which tells about which trains you have and the routes that you have from block to block and the turnouts to switch. So this is what we are going to look through. It's the second series because, well, in the meantime, we are at version two of the software, which contains quite a lot of improvements and additional functions. So let's have a look. The first thing to do is download the software. It's a zip file and the link goes in the description or you can go to the EEP forum where it has a thread Lua automatic train control. Uh, it's also a thread in German by the way. And there is this download link here that downloads the zip file. When the download finished, you should have this EEP block control dot zip in your download folder. Right click it and say extract all and then confirm. And that should give you a new folder EEP block control. And inside is again a folder, but over there are the files that we need to do something with. First of all, in the Lua folder, there is this control software. That's the file that you need to copy and paste into your uh, EEP installation folder. In, if you find it in your program files or if you are on Steam, you have to find it on your Steam folder. Uh, in your program files or in the trend folder, sometimes that happens. There should be a uh, folder called Lua and that's the folder where you move this file to. Once you have found your uh, installation folder, you should also have uh, a GBS folder in, in that installation folder. A GBS stands for Gleisbuild Stellpult or it is a, a control panel and uh, there are several control panel files inside that you also have to move to your EEP installation folder. When that is done, uh, yeah, you can also move uh, the EEP block control. Oh, let me uh, put a view on uh, details. Uh, all, the all the files in this uh, folder you can uh, move to your Anlagen folder. That should do it. Then you are prepared to follow all these demos. Oh, and by the way, uh, last but not least, uh, there also is an extensive English and a German user manual PDF file available. So you can just read everything that we are going to have a look at in these videos. This is demo layout number one. The purpose of these videos is, suppose you created your own EEP layout, what do you have to do to create your own train traffic? Well, we're going to have a look at that. But first let's have a look at what's new in version 2 software. Well, obviously we see these tooltips and let me even restart the code. Then we also see that it shows the position of the signal so that you know uh, if it's red, uh, what is that number of that signal that is important to know when you create your tables. Uh, also the turnouts have a number and their position. We also see when you reload the code that uh, it starts in find mode, which is completely new when you place a train uh, Lua will uh, try to find the trains and any train that is stopped by a signal is found automatically so you don't have to do that strange version 1 strange placement of trains you can place a train it will automatically be found 
uh, and it says it found one train and this layout has only one train so we know now that the find mode has finished and we can start the layout why not with the main switch which is not new uh, we also have this little guy here which is the switch for the control panel if you switch that then you get this top over here called desk one and that shows the control panel which is not new that also was included in version one mm, well let's look at 2d mode and see what needs to be done to create your own automatic train traffic okay so this is the layout in 2d view suppose that we just created this layout and it, it is empty uh, it has no signals and no sensors yet uh, but we, we need to know what do we need to do to be able to create automatic train traffic. Well, it is block control. So what we need to do is identify blocks. And the block is identified by a signal. Uh, and then that signal gets a number automatically via EEP. So the signal number identifies the block. Uh, well, in this simple layout, it seems logical to have three blocks. One over here where a train can stop. And Lua gave this signal number 10. And then we have this little station with two tracks. So we have two signals at the end of the track. And Lua gave them the numbers 8 and 9. You cannot choose these numbers yourself. They are automatically generated. But now we have only the end of the block. Uh, we also have to... Uh, Lua also needs a way to, to find out if a train entered this block and for that we use these sound sensors and let's have a look inside the properties uh, right click it and there we see what we did is add this Lua function and called block control enter block and then a number the number of this signal now what can happen if you start with a, a new layout that when you try to enter this uh, yeah the, the, this code this function uh, that it says it cannot find that function when that happens the simple solution is reload your lua code yeah your lua code you first have to copy and paste uh, the uh, one of the example uh, layouts uh, preferably layout number five because that contains all the functions that we need uh, and then reload the script and then those functions are generated and then they will always be available and you do not get that error message okay so we have three blocks a block is a signal and a entry sensor one rule is uh, uh, very important here there are can not be may not it's not allowed to have a turnout between the sensor and the signal turnouts are never part of a block please design your blocks such that that always is uh, taken into account and then uh, we have created this uh, main switch this is a, a specific kind of signal that you can find here when you edit your signals and we have this signal number uh, that uh, I don't know what number it is. Let's have a look. Number four. Yeah. And that signal is the switch for the, the on off switch for the train. That is all that you have to do to prepare your layout. So now let's have a look what we have to do in the Lua code to start generating automatic traffic. This is the Lua code of demo layout one. I opened it in Notepad++, which I find more convenient to edit my files. What do we have to do to allow automatic train traffic on this little layout? Well, we have a main switch and we have to tell Lua the number of that switch. And that thing is called the main signal and the number in this case was three so that's easy then over here we have a table called passenger trains uh, and that same table is used over here let's first have a look over here this is the trains table and on this layout we have only one train uh, the name that uh, i've given it is steam 
it had its own on off switch and the number of that switch yeah it's called signal the number of that signal was four and it has these allowed blocks this train is allowed only in the blocks that are specified in this table passenger trains yeah i could have given it any name uh, the name does not matter as long as that table name is the same as the table that is uh, defined over here um, what does this table say the passenger trains they are allowed in blocks 8 9 and 10 and then every block has gotten a number and that is the amount of seconds that we want the train to be in that block uh, uh, a number one means uh, that it is not going to stop unless it cannot move on because the blocks ahead are occupied by other trains well in this layout with only one train that will never be so a one means just move on but here we have specified 15 that is 15 seconds the train will stay in the block for 15 seconds that includes by the way the driving time from the entry sensor to the signal so if you want to have a very accurate stop time you may need to do one time do a, a measurement of that uh, driving time and add it uh, so you can give every train a specific uh, scheduled waiting time in in any specific block um, and then finally we have the routes table and yeah that is very important not to make any mistakes because here we specify the turnout states if we want to drive from signal 8 to signal 10 we have to switch turnout number 2 into state 1 uh, yeah let's let's quickly go back to the layout and maybe to the view is even better um, if we drive from signal 8 which is over here to signal 10 then we switch turnout number 2 in the state main I right click it now and it says main so that's what we specify in uh, this table and of course we have to do that for every route that is uh, possible on this layout it's not much work it's more that uh, yeah you have to be a little bit focused not to make any error so yeah it's quite easy to uh, yeah to to prepare your layout for automatic traffic and there's now one final thing to do that is add a train let's do that okay so here we are in 3d mode i prepared my layout uh, and as far as i know everything is correct i can place a train the track is empty uh, i reloaded the script reload and then it says we are in find mode yeah but there's no train so there's nothing to find so let's go to edit mode and place a train uh, a rolling stock a railway standard gauge locomotives steam and uh, well let me take a small steam why not uh, i don't need a big one and this one i'm going to place it before the pre-signal i uh, le let me drive that train uh, to this signal number 10 but let me place it over there i know that that will be before the signal now is the important step in the table i said this train has the name steam so i'm going to give it that exact same name over here okay and there it is its nose is pointing in the right direction all i need to do now is give it a speed and there we go drive mode let me click that train here yeah, and then yeah, click again and i can give it a speed let's say 40 it starts to drive as we can see over here and it will go to the pre-signal and then it uh, yeah it's driving a bit fast yeah over here we say we, we see steam is found in block 10 yeah that's correct find mode has found one train and that's all that was needed this layout is now ready to drive so let's start it shift and there we go 
we can see over here that this train is now on the path from 10 to 9. Uh, 9 that is this upper track, this inner track over here. And that did not have a stop time. I remember the stop time was a 1 second which is no stop time. Yes it goes to the inner track and it has no stop time. Uh, so it will say over here it stays at least 1 second. Well that means it has no stop time. It's now again on the path from 9 to 10. Yeah that's okay. And now it goes on the path from 10 to 8. 8 is here this outer track and there we gave it 15 seconds stop time. Well not stop time including the driving time and 15 seconds may be a bit close. It will stop probably but very short. Well for the end of this video let's just see that happen. Uh, see if we are correct in our assumptions that 15 seconds may be a bit too short for this track here. It is detected uh, right now here and uh, well it is going to stop. That pre-signal is uh, too close to the uh, real signal but that's of course fine tuning on your layout. It does stop, see it does stop and it did not stop on the other track. But the stop time is a bit too short. Well we knew that on beforehand. This is it, you create an EEP layout, you uh, add the signals and the sensors and then you define your Lua tables which is not even that much work. You place a train and then you have automatic traffic. Isn't that fun? Yeah, it is. See you back in demo 2 maybe. Bye bye.